Hi, Taras Puskin here, and I'm back at the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. And I'm in one of my favorite places here at the farm. I'm in one of the refugiums of Slim Jim. And in this wonderful refugium is one of the macroalgaes that I first saw when I joined here at the TSA team. It's Halimenia, our dragon's breath. Now, I wear a lot of hats here at the farm. I look into a lot of things. But one of my favorite aspects of my job is being able to take all the different critters in our tanks, the corals, the fish, the invertebrates, the macroalgae. I love being able to take all these critters and get to research them in my spare time. Mostly this is because we want to figure out how to keep them healthy, how to grow them quicker. But you go down all these rabbit holes, especially when I find myself up late at night with a cup of coffee going through Google Scholar and I've typed in a list of all of our favorite macroalgaes. And you'd be shocked how many of these rabbit holes reveal wonderful stories. Every each one of these critters, be it a coral, a fish, they're not just that. They're objects swimming around in your tank looking nice. Each one is a species, an individual organism with a story. And when it comes to the macroalgae we'll be talking today, it's a story of incredible hope and incredible potential when it comes to all the things that this particular species of seaweed can do for humanity, both in and outside of our reef aquariums. So today, we're going to be doing a species spotlight on the Halaminia genus of red macroalgae. We're gonna be going over all the various things that it does to benefit the reef aquarium as a functional organism in our tanks, and all the things that have been done with it by humans for benefit over historic history, and also some wonderful groundbreaking research which is being done in the biomedical field when it comes to applying the various compounds created by this majestic dragon's breath red algae. So welcome, we'll be discussing for the rest of this episode, Halaminia, dragon's breath macroalgae. The genus of Halaminia red macroalgae is located in semi-tropical and temperate waters worldwide. But specifically, the Halaminia that we refer to in the hobby as dragon's breath is pretty much located around Hawaiian archipelago, radiating out towards the Indo-Pacific, and then radiating even farther towards the Indian Ocean. This is Halaminia dervellii and several other tropical members of this genus that live essentially in the shadows of wild coral reefs. They live in the shallow seas and sand flats outside radiating from these wild coral reefs and they basically enjoy a constant flux of both some nutrients from the land and also nutrients radiating from the coral reef itself. So it's in this environment that's relatively clean water, high levels of light, and still a constant supply of nutrients that this majestic red algae thrives. And it's this wild environment and it's fantastic red coloration and flame-like architecture that also reveals some of the hidden potential value that this species has to offer. Now, when it comes to dragon's breath in the reef aquarium, it enjoys many of the same benefits that a lot of our other macroalgae species have, uh, or offer rather, like catamorpha, hypnia, certainly gracilaria. When it's in the aquarium, especially in refugiums such as this, dragon's breath is a powerful photosynthesizing agent, taking in phosphates, nitrates, being a sink for heavy metals, absorbing carbon dioxide, and excreting oxygen. This benefits local populations of pods, which use the surface area of Halaminia as a nice little uh, housing area and substrate that also has localized supply of oxygen. It also helps modulate the pH of high, uh, high production coral systems that we have here. Whereas by having the refugiums on during the night, we're able to modulate the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels and modulate therefore the pH overall in our systems to prevent fluxes happening when the light shut off in the main coral displays. Halaminia is rich with all kinds of fatty acids, bioactive starches, bioactive trace metals, and uh, pigments that can be digested and utilized, all kinds of precious nutrition that can be one, converted from all this waste, nitrates and phosphates taken in uh, from its photosynthesis, and then two, re-delivered the things such as tangs and other herbivorous animals up in the display tank. And for potentially our purposes, uh, something I'm interested in is breeding urchins in the future and using Halaminia as a high value feedstock for them and other uh, seaweed eating invertebrates. Beyond being a nutrient sink and some superb tang and sea urchin feed, 
Palamenia dervellii is also aesthetically extremely pleasing and is gaining in popularity when it comes to macro-only display aquariums, where, as opposed to just being a really attractive functional member of the cleanup crew in a way, it transcends that becoming a display organism piece in and of itself. Overall, Dragon's Breath offers many, many, many beneficial offerings to the re greater reef aquarium hobby, both as a feedstock and as a wonderful refugium macroalgae and the like. But its benefits to humanity certainly do not end with its embrace in the reef aquarium hobby. Halamenia dervellii in its native range in the Hawaiian Islands and the Philippines is enjoyed as, frankly, a high value sea vegetable. It's something which uh, is, very, very, is widely consumed and potentially offers a wide range of health benefits to those that have consumed it traditionally over time. We'll be discussing that more when it comes to the research going down specifically in the dragon's breath itself. It also is a producer of carrageenan, something that we discussed in our History of Gracilaria episode, a compound extremely important for the creation of agar that has allowed for the culturing of bacteria and launched humanity forward as far as biomedical research, while at the same time uh, allowing us to make beers, lotions, and all kinds of other emulsified products. We can see here that our tumbling Halaminia culture is getting blasted by this radion light. These PAR readings, when I get towards the surface, get well over 500. If I get above the surface, we get almost towards 1,000 micromoles per meters per second. This Halaminia is an algae that can withstand really, really bright light. It in fact, thrives in it. Now, how can it withstand, let alone utilize, all that bright light? Why? It's the pigments contained and manufactured within the dragon's breast cells. These pigments, which not only shield it from UV radiation, but allow it to capture all that huge intensity of photons and convert it into all this wonderful red tissue you see before me. Why is it red? Why, amongst others, the pigment phycoerythrin is responsible. A magical pigment, the same one in our red rhodomonas microalgae. Phycoerythrin is among many things, but a giant bioactive battery, which allows it to absorb all kinds of stray electrons, prevent from UV radiation, and basically act as a wonderful antioxidation agent. Now, it's phycoerythrin that has been specifically investigated for its direct biomedical applications. These include things such as whitening the skin, improving complexion. It includes things such as reducing wrinkles, it also includes having anti-diabetic effects. There are all kinds of things that phycoerythrin are directly responsible for. They even find that it's able to eliminate things like E. coli and Staphylococcus bacteria. So there's definitely an antimicrobial aspect when it comes to Halaminia, uh, specifically in the phycoerythrin that it produces that can be extracted and redeployed for a wide range of potential biomedical applications. The article links below from the Journal of Asian Tropical Biomedicine details how a specific fatty acid produced by Halaminia, hexadecanoic acid, can be concentrated and actually delivered in a petri dish, mind you, so still early on research, to breast cancer cells. And when this hexadecanoic acid was exposed to breast cancer cells, they did a wonderful thing. Now, they didn't just die. There's many ways to kill cancer just by eliminating it. We have radiation and chemotherapy for that. What is far more valuable is to have some compound, be it derived from anything, in this case, potentially from this humble seaweed, that will induce a state of apoptosis in the cancer cell. It's a $9 word that means this cancer cell dies but everything's going according to plan. It is a controlled cell death that the cancer cell initiates on its own accord to eliminate the spread of that disease. Now, it's very exciting in this article that extracts from this algae can induce that as it provides a truly targeted way to eliminate cancer cells in a way that is far less destructive than the current means available uh, in contemporary medicine. So I'd like to start to conclude this episode with that in mind, that within our tanks, every tang, every, every grouper, every acropora, every zoanthid, sarcophyton, every urchin, within the guts of every snail, every emerald crab, could be the magic cell, the cell of that shrimp, that, that, that electric scallop, 
that Acropora, perhaps the cell of a bacteria associated with it. Each one of them, an infinite treasure trove of potential benefit. And that's where I think the reef aquarium industry seeks its highest value and pursues its highest ideals, where not only do we, the community at large of reef aquarists, love and enjoy the organisms in our tanks and spend all of our time and our money and our passion and our sweat and our tears to sustain them and keep them alive, but deep down, by spreading that awareness, by spreading the amount of eyes that get to see and observe and be normalized these organisms, who knows what inspirations we might invoke? Who knows what treasures may lie inside the cells of each and every one of the precious critters inside our reefs? So with that, I'd like to end this episode on a question. How many of you keep Halimenia gervellii? Do you feed it to your tangs? Do you find uh, learning about different aspects and research going on with organisms in your reef tank interesting? Or do you mainly just see them as something that you like to just enjoy the look of? There's nothing wrong with that, certainly. But I'd be curious to see if there's more and more of you that might be interested in learning about what contemporary research is being done on the microscopic level when it comes to noble macroalgae such as Halimenia and all the other organisms that we have here at the TSA farm. They say the cure for cancer might be found out in space. Others think within the depths of the rainforest. They're probably all true, but certainly cures for cancer already exist right underneath our noses, right underneath our gaze, a few meters below the water's surface. Thank you. We'll see you next time.